What's up everybody, TCM back again with another video. And today we're gonna to be talking about blind cross-site scripting. Now, if you've never heard of blind cross-site scripting, that's okay, this is exactly the video for you. So I learned about blind cross-site scripting a few years ago when I was working on a bug bounty platform. And I had gone in there and I had found a cross-site scripting of sorts. I was in my own personal page. I'm gonna show you an example here in a second, but I was in my own personal page. I had gotten cross-site scripting to trigger. I got really excited and I submitted it to the bounty platform. And they said, well, ex actually what you have here is what's known as self cross-site scripting. So you really don't have anything. Self cross-site scripting is out of scope and it typically is for bug bounty platforms. Uh, so you should go and try to find a way to elevate that. They said, look into blind cross-site scripting. I had never heard of blind cross-site scripting, didn't know what it was, had no clue. So I went and did some research, found out about it, and I learned quite a bit. So I'm going to share some of that knowledge with you uh, in, in terms of blind cross-site scripting and where you should look for it, when you should use it, etc. And before we do that, I'm going to ask you the favor, as I always do, of Please do consider subscribing to the channel if you do enjoy this video. Hit that like button, uh, comment down below if you got any questions, comments, concerns, if you love me, if you hate me, etc. And before we get started, let's go ahead and take a quick pause. We're gonna take a word from our sponsor, Integrity, and then we'll be right back. Today's video is proudly sponsored by Integrity, an ethical hacking platform. And if we take a look at their website, you can see that they are a European-based ethical hacking and bug bounty platform. All of their clients are based in Europe. It does not mean that you have to be from Europe to hack on their platform. So if you wanna earn some money, you want to do some cool stuff, do some hacking and do it legally, Integrity is a great place to do it. All you have to do is come in here and sign up. I actually have a link in the description below. I'll also put the link on the screen right now. If you're interested, sign up, go to the public programs, look them up, and just start hacking away, find some bugs, earn some money, and do great things. Okay, so hopping in, I want to show you as a brief example of kind of what I was talking about with the self cross-site scripting. Now there isn't a bug here, we're going to visualize it in our brains. Now imagine that I have this Udemy profile, and this is just an example. Udemy does have a public bug bounty program on HackerOne. So imagine we were on Udemy and I was messing around and in the, in the first name field, I came in here and I put in a payload that was, I don't just, we're just gonna talk really basic. Let's say I just did a script alert one and then script. Right. I came in here and I got that. I saved my profile. I go to my profile and it triggers. Now it triggers for me, but imagine that nobody else could see that part of my profile. Imagine like instead of Udemy, this was like a shopper cart. Like we were at on Target or Walmart or some big retailer. And this profile was only for us. Now we're seeing this and we're getting cross-site scripting, but who are we able to effect. Well, we weren't able to affect anybody. We're only affecting ourselves. So that's where the self cross-site scripting comes in. And this is a good opportunity to go and look for blind cross-site scripting in the sense that maybe we can inject a payload that instead of just affecting ourselves, maybe if an admin comes along or somebody's looking at the logs or somebody's doing something that's not us, comes along and sees this payload and then it gets injected and it's blind, they don't see it, we don't know it happens, but there's gotta be a way to track all of this. So I kinda wanna do that example, and then we're gonna cover some other examples. The only reason I'm talking about this first is because this is kinda how it led into me learning about it, uh, but we're gonna talk about other examples and where you could put blind cross-site scripting. I'm gonna give you resources to go do your own studying, and this should be a fun little adventure. Uh, so the first place I want to stop is I want to stop over at Port Swigger Academy. Now, Port Swigger Academy is fantastic. They've got a bunch of labs if you've never been here before. The one that I'm referencing today is going to be a stored cross-site scripting lab. It's very, very basic, but it's going to teach us the way. Okay, so I've already got this loaded up. Um, I'm actually gonna close this out and I'm gonna reload it. All we're gonna do is just right click and open a new tab to access this lab. Now, I will put this in the description below. All you have to do is sign up for an account and then come here, access the lab, it's 100% free. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and let that load. While that's loading, I also wanna talk about something called XSS Hunter. Now this is at xsshunter.com. You come here, you sign up. This is my little profile here. So you just sign up, it's super easy. You come in here and you get these payloads. Now these payloads are given to you, it's super straightforward. Um, and the one I'm using here is TCM Security as an account. You could see that it's going here. They have a little web page for me that basically if anybody goes to this website, it's going to track that information. We're gonna to try to collect IP information. We're gonna to try to collect a screenshot. We're gonna to try to, to collect the DOM and download any information off the page. You're gonna see what that looks like here in a second. But more importantly, something to point out that I've learned from experience, the shorter that you can make your username on this platform, the better. Um, I've ran into some issues before with the longer username, and this is only created just for an example. But if you can make like a three or four character, five character username, the shorter the better. Sometimes payloads and fields where we might be inserting this has have limitations and they have character limitations. So the shorter the better just to meet some of those requirements. Uh, but you can see it has a bunch of different payloads here that could work. And it says, hey, we've got some for jQuery that only work in Firefox with HTML5, uh, different kind of filters, bypasses, all kinds of stuff. Now you could take this link and do it in your own style. Um, the, the exploit that we're running today is very basic. So we're gonna be able to run this and it's just gonna work fine. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this. Now let's go ahead and go to the lab. Now, if we go to the lab here, you can see it's a basic blog. Let's just go ahead and view a blog post here. And I'm just gonna jump ahead and we're gonna do basic cross-site scripting. What we're looking for here is a stored cross-site scripting. Um, and this is a good example. So if you want to think about when we're, we're trying to target something, we're trying to target something that we can store cross-site scripting into. This isn't gonna really work with persistent based. So we're gonna to want to figure out how we can trigger this or how we can get somebody to open this. And we'll talk about that thought process here in just a minute. But here, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave this as a comment. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put in a name. We'll just put in test, put in the email test at test.com. And then we'll just do HTTPS test.com. All right, I'm gonna post this. Now, if you just put a regular payload in here, like a script alert one, um, you should still generate a, a an alert, a cross-site scripting alert. This is going to just kind of hide itself and tuck away. Okay, and now it says your comment has been submitted. Let's go back to the blog. And we'll come in here and you'll see, okay, we have a little bit of evidence left behind from that closed tag. Oh, for some reason it posted three times. Anyway, we, we have this payload in here. Now we don't see a trigger. We don't know if there's a trigger, but if we come here, the nice thing about XSS Hunter, by the way, is that it will store your, your payloads and then the, the fire or the trigger could fire who knows when. Um, you see posts on Twitter uh, occasionally of people going out there and leaving these payloads going and they trigger like four years later. I think it's the longest one I've seen. Um, so when I put these on bug bounty platforms or I'm doing this on an application, I will make sure that I notate like the date that I ran a payload. I have a little spreadsheet of when I ran the payload, the URL I ran the payload on, date, time, et cetera, just so I can track this stuff. But we give it a nice little refresh here and we should see some information. Okay, and there's a bunch. Um, it looks like it triggered a bunch of times. Um, okay, so this is good. The other thing that will happen is this will email you. So if you have an email put into your signup, you're gonna get an email alert. So you don't have to come in here and check this all the time. Um, basically, you could just wait, you, you submit these payloads and then you just wait for something to happen if anything happens. Um, so when you do get something, sometimes there's thumbnail. Obviously, we're not getting a thumbnail from this site, that's okay. Uh, we can go in and view the full report. You can see the victim's IP address. Um, you can come through here and see any relevant information. The screenshot's not working, that's okay. You can see the vulnerable page and where it was found. So here's where that happened, the execution origin. Um, you can see again, the, the refer, the IP address, the user agent, so we're using Mozilla Firefox. If there were any cookies, guess what? You could steal some cookies here too, if we can steal them. You get the DOM like we talked about, you can download the DOM. Um, and you could see exactly what the page looked like when you're going through it. So that's really nice. Um, and then, yeah, you get a markdown report too if you want it. So this is a beautiful, beautiful platform. 
Uh, the one thing I do want to point out about XSS Hunter is sometimes this is out of scope for bug bounties. We'll talk about that too. Sometimes bug bounty programs don't like you using this. So pay close attention to your scope in a bug bounty program. Um, however, if you don't want to use this, you can use other tools and I'll show you this blog here in a minute um, where we can you can use Burp Collaborator. Um, there's also some tools off GitHub where you can host your own. Um, so you have options as well. Now, when we want to talk about this, um, this stored cross-site scripting, where are some places that we can put this? Well, we could put this in um, form submissions. So say we're submitting a form, say we're submitting a help desk ticket, um, any sort of, of ticketing system, any sort of like, I don't know, credit card payment um, in a login type email. Um, I've seen these all over the place. So you got to think of where they could show up. Like if you have a, a login attempt, maybe those show up in, in logs or like I was talking about earlier when we have a like a Target or a Walmart and we have that account, maybe that account has logging somewhere and it sees, hey, first name in the logs, first name triggers that alert. And then guess what? You see a picture of a panel. Um, I actually tried this on a well, I saw this uh, a good example of this and I'll link it down below of a blog um, by Sam Curry who got blind cross-site scripting off of his Tesla. Now, I had read that and immediately um, knew when I got my Tesla that I wanted to set something very similar up. Now, he set a blind payload. Actually, um, a blind payload looked just like this as his car's name. So you can set your name of a car. When they went and plugged in and the in the Tesla shop, it triggered this payload. He had had this sitting there for quite a while, and it triggered this. Um, when I got my Tesla, I had to take it into the shop I would say within a few weeks. And uh, when I was submitting all the documentations and the forms and everything else that I needed to submit uh, in order to do it, and this is through the mobile app, but when I needed to do it through the app, I went ahead and submitted different various forms of the payloads. And they, they probably thought it looked crazy on their side, like what is this guy putting in there? Um, but I did something very similar because I was hoping to trigger something there because um, he got $10,000 for that. And of course, if I could just get an easy trigger, I want $10,000 as well, you know? Um, so this is an example where you put it. But I also have this blog for you. This is a fantastic blog. It's two years old, almost three years old, and it's still incredibly relevant. Um, the, the methodology and tricks have not changed. So right at the top of the blog, by the way, it talks about the different tools that you can use for blind XSS. The most common by far is XSS Hunter, um, but there are other features here as well. Um, I've used no XSS before. I think it's hit or miss. Um, these two are great. Burp Collaborator is um, is good as well. I just like the feature of using um, XSS Hunter because literally it could be three or four years later, and guess what? You're still gonna you're still gonna get that trigger. I think it's beautiful. So this talks about how to set it up, and then it comes in here and it talks about all the different ways that you can try to go in and trigger. Um, some sort of blind cross-site scripting. So it talks about user agent injection. Um, they talk about using um, your address form. I think I saw one from Nam Second here. Yeah, about using the second line of your IP or your address field when you're filling out a form. I mean, there's a lot of different things. First name field for a credit card payment. A lot of different places. They even give you some examples. So I'm going to submit this blog down below as well, just as an example of some things that you can read up on and um, you can deal with. This this video is more or less giving you an example of what's out there and that even though you can't necessarily see where your payload's going, it doesn't hurt to submit a cross-site scripting payload, uh, especially on forums or especially other places and see if that triggers. I do this all the time. I Like I said, I keep a spreadsheet. It doesn't hurt to do that just so you know how long ago you sent that. Um, and then just keep keep your data. But anyway, this will email you. I mean, if I went and checked my email right now, I would have God knows how many of these um, sitting in there. Uh, so that's really it. Short video, easy, easy concept. I think it's fairly straightforward. Um, if you can get the idea, if you have some sort of um, stored cross-site scripting, that's great. If you can think of how you can elevate that or you can use that with blind cross-site scripting, maybe trick an admin in getting an admin panel um, or getting an admin cookie. Uh, there's a lot of options here. So always be thinking about the next thing um, and just be thinking about blind cross-site scripting when you're going out and doing your bug bounty hunting too because I think this is one of those that just kind of, it kind of gets not talked about. Uh, it's talked about for sure in the bug bounty community, but when you first learn about cross-site scripting, you're like, oh, 
there's stored, there's reflected, and there's DOM base. But nobody talks really about self, and nobody really talks about blind, I feel like. So this is a one of those lessons I kind of just want to introduce you to one of those, those tactics that you should be looking into. Um, research from here on out is yours and yours alone. So I'm gonna encourage you to start with this blog, uh, sign up to XSS Hunter, um, go play around if you want in Port Swigger Labs. All of this is free. Uh, no money required whatsoever. So go ahead and check this out and, um, you know, good luck. Uh, I, I hope all the bounties, if you find a bounty this way, comment down below and say, Hey, I made, you know, 250 bucks off of this and, and just let me know. Um, that'd be awesome to hear. But until next time, my name is the cyber mentor and I do thank you for joining me.